Hey guys, so I just wanted to do a quick comparison here between uh, Sony Xperia L1 and the Moto G5. Uh, so this is the uh, G5 for 2017 uh, compared with Sony's uh, like mid-range phone here. Uh, so both of these will set you back uh, about 200 I think for the Moto G5 and 150 odd for the Xperia L1. So let's just start them up here at the same time. So both of these are running uh, latest Android in terms of the software. I think the G5 will give you a nice uh, processor, Snapdragon, uh, as well as the same kind of camera setup as the higher end phones. So that could be an advantage. And what you can see, the L1 does give you a much better bezel ratio. I mean, look at the size of these things on the Moto G5. That is absolutely, you know, terrible. Uh, but I think in terms of the screen technology, both of them are quite similar. With the L1, uh, you are getting a uh, Type-C connection at the bottom here, which is a significant advantage, uh, which gives you like faster data transfer speeds and you know, future-proofing, where you don't get that on the Moto G5, which is annoying. Uh, I think both of them aren't fully waterproof, but Moto does tend to coat its phones with like a nano kind of repellent sort of stuff, so that is nice. Uh, so in terms of the software here, you can see we're getting Sony. Uh, Sony's kind of like uh, skin here, which is pretty good, you know. It's, uh, I'd say Sony should definitely go back to how it used to be, though, in terms of its like customized uh, like uh, skin, because it was a bit more interesting. Uh, whereas Moto uh, is very uh, stock as well kind of thing, uh, but they have like added some interesting features to the Moto device, like for example your Moto display, uh, you know your gestures etc. Like shaking the phone, you can go into the camera, uh, which you don't get that on the L1, so it feels a little bit lacking there. Uh, the area where the L1 does really shine is in terms of the equaliser settings, which are much better. In fact, the Walkman app, etc. So I'd say this is more of an audio feels device compared to the Moto, which is much more kind of boring when it comes to the uh, music here. Uh, one significant advantage of the Moto is the fingerprint scanner is actually present here, which you don't get on uh, the Sony, which is, you know, it would have been very easy for them to implement one on the side here, like the higher-end phones, but it does miss out on that. And in terms of the build quality, both of them feel very solid. You know, both of them uh, are built to last here, but we do get a bit of sticky out lens on the uh, Moto, which is a bit annoying. I think this looks a bit more sleekish and, you know, nice in terms of the design. Uh, I think they're both using fixed batteries, but in my usage, uh, the G5 is uh, pretty good when it comes to the battery, because of the efficient processor, etc. You get this nice uh, battery widget as well, uh, which shows you the battery remaining. In terms of the speed, so let's just have a quick look here. I think we have closed everything down and we can just quickly open some stuff. Uh, I think generally, again, it's going to be like the Snapdragon versus MediaTek argument here. You know, no matter what MediaTek I have used, it has always been quite disappointing compared to an equivalent uh, like processor. You can see it takes a while for things to open on the L1. There's a certain delay I've noticed. Uh, which would drive me mad, you know, if I was using it day to day. I think the screen is actually better though on the L1 looking at it from this perspective. Uh, both of them I think are on the Max here and the screen on the Moto G5 is very disappointing because uh, it's not as good as the previous model. So, but in terms of, if you're looking for your speed here, you can certainly see uh, who is ahead, you know, in terms of the, the Snapdragon processor. Let's just have a look at the Wi-Fi as well. So we can see. So this one and this one are on the same. Another thing which I don't like about MediaTek processor is the Wi Fi performance, which is usually terrible. You can see, I mean, that score for a 5G like supporting device is very under par. Usually you'd expect about 100 for a mid-range device, which I, I guess you're going to get with the G5 here. And I wasn't wrong, you can see. So, you can see the upload's quite good, but 
it's all about the download really to me uh, and in terms of the cameras as I said we do have a very class leading camera in the G5 uh, series I think it's the same as the one you get in the S7 Edge but probably without the you know uh, good stuff that you do get like the software etc uh, so uh, I have done like a comparison here out and about and I can comfortably say the G5 completely destroys the the Sony at the end of the day in terms of the reliability you know it's much faster to focus I think it has phase detection autofocus you get nice spot here in the background here uh, and just uh, nice shots generally whereas the L1 uh, you can get good shots out of it but you really have to struggle with it and you shouldn't have to do that in a, in a device which is like uh, you know 2000 17 uh, it's like you, you need to bring around like a tripod with you to get a decent shot here this is more low light and you can see the color balance is a bit weird it's like yellowish whereas on the G5 uh, it gets the color balance very right and the image is a lot sharper overall uh, so very strange really you know Motorola used to be terrible when it came to cameras but now uh, they're getting so good on their like their cheaper devices there's not much point in buying more expensive phones uh, but uh, yeah, just a quick comparison here between these two. We'll do some more comparisons with the L1 as well. And maybe the G5, you know, if people are still looking at this phone, uh, it's a pretty nice phone, the uh, G5 phone. I think it's going to be supplanted soon with a new uh, X uh, Play as well, soon. So hope to get that in. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.